welcome back to the channel. I am your instructor as always, Dr. Delmico L. Cunningham. And today I wanted to look at a program that a lot of people might know about, might not know about. Um, it is a digital content creation program, but unlike Max and Maya, which are the more the, the normal programs that we look at here on this channel, unlike those two, this one is clearly and purely the zen of modeling. It is Never Center's Silo, and specifically Silo 2.3. Um, Silo is a fantastic polygonal and subdivisional modeling program. So it works with polygon modeling as well as sub D modeling. Um, realistically, subdivisions are kind of a subset, or in some ways you can look at them being a superset of uh, traditional polygonal models. But here inside of Silo, the thing that makes this program so great is that it only deals with modeling. You don't have any um, animation tools in here, there's no um, you know, dynamics tools in here, none of those things happen inside of Silo. The only thing that happens in Silo is modeling. And you might say, well that's kind of, you know, well whatever. But when you want to just straight up model, this is probably one of the best programs that you can have that is geared towards a specific skill set or a specific set of tools. So here inside of Silo, I can see that on my right hand side I have some of my kind of um, kind of editors, which I have like my numerical editor, which is very akin to the um, the the panel inside of Maya, where where I actually able to put in like rotational values, scale values, and things of that nature inside of my channel box inside of Maya. This is very similar to that. And also in here, much like Maya, I have my um, scene editor, which shows me everything that's in my scene as well as groups that are in my scene. Now, unlike Maya, there, there are a, a different set of shortcut keys to get through some things. So as you look in here, if you look at my editor option window at the very top, you'll see to get to the screen editor is control alt E, you know, the info, scene info is control alt I, object properties control alt O. Some things kind of make sense and if you think about it, control alt O object, right? Numerical editor, control alt N. Uh, material editor, control alt M and you know things of that nature so things kind of do make a little bit of sense inside of here they, they actually do so if you're, you're really the only one that's kind of really weird is the mouse settings one as well as the button settings like those two are kind of weird because this one's like control alt p and this is control alt uh, comma uh, those are a little bit awkward but everything else is pretty similar um, or it has a it has a, some type of convention to it that makes makes sense when you're using it in here also I actually have my things that I can modify my objects with so I have my modify menu and I have like bevel, my break, bridge, I can cut, extrude I can fill holes, flatten things, um, local move, merge them, and mirror them across um, in unify normals, reverse normals, triangulate things real basic modif modification operations that I'd be able to do inside of any other program and they're just right here in my modify panel um, and then I also have my create panel where I can go in here and create basic geometry so everything from like a uh, cube to a sphere I can just go into create and just create that I can lathe objects, I can extrude objects do path extrusions which are really cool um, I have my edge tool, polygon tool, surface tool, and topology tool because you can also retopologize inside of Silo it actually makes a really good retopology um, program uh, not on the not quite on the level as like Topo Gun or some of the tools they have inside of Maya and Max, or even some of the great tools they have inside of 3D Coat, which which is probably my favorite tool to retopologize in, which is Coat currently. Um, I haven't used Topo Gun in quite a while. Uh, I don't even know if they're still making Topo Gun actually, but this is kind of the interface of Silo. So in that interface, I've got basically just my perspective I've got some toolbars over here on my right hand side and then I have my different select my different sets that I can be in so I I'm in modeling set right now I can go to my selection set and I can go to my UV set 
and that's really it. That's 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 it inside of, in here inside of uh, Silo. Now the control keys for the camera are actually very awesome. They are Maya inspired control keys. So the Alt key and left mouse lets me orbit my camera. Alt key and middle mouse lets me translate my camera, and then Alt and right mouse lets me dolly my camera in and out. So it's very simple, very simple Maya controls. So nothing, nothing over the over overly complicated about those control schemes. You know, if you've used any of um, 3D programs, you're probably very familiar with it. A lot of pro, a lot of other 3D programs do like to adhere to the Maya um, kind of movement set of keys. I don't know if that's because Maya is a more popular Hollywood professional package, which is why I'm surmising that's that uh that is in place, but you know, most programs have a very Maya esque um kind of manipulation to the camera. Now, one thing that's a little bit different in here than it is inside of like a Max or a Maya or other programs is that I have like if you're used to it inside of other programs you have your W E R in there. So you have like W E R like were. But inside of here it's a little bit different. So my W is my move tool, is my move and translate tool. E is my scale tool and R is my rotate tool. They actually set this up to make sense, right? So move and then E for scale and then R for rotate. They they really wanted it to be that way. The T key is my paint displacement map. So if I'm painting a displacement, I can paint that in here. Um, so that's your manipulators to be able to grab things and move things and manipulate them. And I'll make a simple box. To make a simple box inside of Silo is pretty simple. It's pretty simple. <laughs> I'm going to hit the Alt and C key. So Alt cube, right? So Alt C is cube. If I hit Control Alt C, that brings up my color settings. So if I look inside of my editors, you can see Control Alt C gives me my color settings. So it's actually pretty it's actually pretty simple um, when to be able to, to be able to have this. So Alt C gives me my you know it gives me my cube. So I'm gonna just look at this and see some manipulations on this. So you can see if I hit W that gives me my move tool and the one thing I like about the move tool here inside of silo is that it gives me this little these little paddles like if you look here this little this little icon right here which lets me know that I'm moving this in you know my y direction and I'm also able to move it in Z but I can't move it backwards in X what this lets me do is it lets me it lets the uh, the optic that I'm moving lock itself to two planes of movement and not have a and not have to worry about the third plane of movement which would probably push it back in space which I like that it's kind of it's kind of interesting to be able to do so I'm hit my E key and it gives me my scale tool and you can see I can do the same thing so I can I can do um, scales where I have a non-proportional scale by grabbing this little guy right here or I can do proportional scale by grabbing this or scale the whole thing by grabbing the the main controller scale uh, make sure we do and then when I hit the R key, it brings up this rotation. So just like other programs, I have the rotational gimbal that lets me rotate. And you can see it does really weird things because it's based off of it's based off of screen rotation. So world space rotation for the big for the big wheel. And if I come here to one of these little tabs that stick up, this is local rotation. So this will rotate along its local axis. But if you use the big round circle, you're gonna be grabbing it by its world coordinates and basically moving it by its world coordinates which which can be helpful but it can be a little confusing because this is based off of world and camera where your camera currently sitting at you know you can see that's what it's rotating off of now if you're in an orthographic view this type of rotation is perfectly fine but here inside a perspective view it's just a little bit um, odd because it, it you know you see it rotates at really weird angles because of the camera is basically the the pivot point of the rotation. So I've got th this guy in here. I can uh, show you some other things how to get to sub objects. So sub objects inside of Silo are actually pretty simple to get to. The thing I love about Silo is that all the keys, realistically, from my left hand, are right in this small little web space area. So I don't have to stretch out really far to get to the keys that I need to manipulate objects inside of Silo.